Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the episode 27 of the 21 Day Hero Show. And I'll tell you right now from the beginning that this episode is special. It's special for me, especially because I've been challenged during the recording of this episode. You know, I've been challenged to step out of my comfort zone a little bit and record and publish this podcast in video format right because uh, as some of you may know I'm currently based in Bali I don't uh, you know I don't have uh, my beautiful uh, sort of a recording setup here Uh, you know I don't have my studio I don't have my nice backdrop and I kind of opted in for uh, doing audio podcasts only just because of those reasons you know I like things perfect but uh, Evan my guest of this uh, episode has challenged me to actually do the video and publish it in the way it is in a raw format you know in where I am in my room here in Bali and that's exactly what I'm doing so uh, without further ado you know let's jump in straight into the episode uh, this episode 27 with Evan Carmichael and I hope you will enjoy it thanks guys three two one let's go all right What's up, everybody? My today's guest is Evan Carmichael. I'm sure you've heard or seen his name before. You know, he's huge on YouTube. You know, if you hang out on YouTube, like probably 99% of people do, uh, I'm sure you saw one of his videos in your feed. You know, his videos are inspiring people to take action, to learn from the best and simply improve. And uh, Evan believes in entrepreneurs. At 19, he built then sold a biotech software company. At 22, he was a venture capitalist helping raise 500K to 15 mil and now runs the biggest YouTube channel for entrepreneurs with over 1 million subscribers. I recently saw on his Instagram feed with this uh, nice, beautiful uh, YouTube 1 million subscriber you know, button. Uh, so congrats on that man and he's also uh, set two world records he use, uh, uses a set stand-up desk rides a Vespa raises funds for Kiva wears five toe shoes created entrepreneur trading cards and so on and he's also an author of books like your uh, one word and top 10 rules book all right Evan so uh, what's going on man what's how are you thanks for the love man great to be here Awesome, awesome. Uh, so, Evan, let's start with the uh, one most important question. What is your biggest superpower? My biggest superpower is the ability to believe in people, uh, usually more than they believe in themselves. All right. And why do you think uh, people tend to believe less in themselves? I think people are afraid to uh, go off and do the thing that they want to do. I think people are afraid of failing in front of other people. I think we play small by default. I think it's part of the human condition. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think we're all capable of greater things. I think everybody awesome. has Michael Jordan talent at something. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they, they just don't know what it is. They don't have the self-awareness or they didn't believe in themselves enough to go chase down their dream. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Like uh, you know, it's you're definitely you know, you know not the first person, not the last person, you know, to say that. That people should care less what other people think, you know. And and people have heard this stuff before. But why do you think uh, people sort of hesitate, you know, to take action on this theory of like I shouldn't care, you know, like I know I shouldn't care about, you know, what my peers think, what my what my parents think, but it's so damn hard. What's what is what is really stopping people to, yeah, stop caring about what people think? They're not practicing enough. Mm-hmm. You have to practice it more. And and I think people are going in. It's like trying to go into the gym and lift a thousand pounds. Like you can't do it. You have to start out by lifting little tiny dumbbells. And so I think most people play small by default. And I think as soon as you can ever catch yourself in any of these scenarios where you are playing small, then you have to go off and do that thing. So as an example, I was walking down the street. I had my headphones on. I'm listening to music, and as I'm walking, I'm 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 bouncing. I'm da- I'm dancing a little bit. I got some my favorite tunes on, and then as I get to a popular intersection, there's a lot of people around me. What do I do by default? I start dancing smaller. I start not moving around as much, and you know why? Why am I dancing smaller? Because I'm afraid of some stranger's opinion of me. And as soon as I caught it, then I had to dance even bigger. Now I'm on the corner of this huge intersection, lots of people around me dancing bigger. And how many times did I get to that intersection and just automatically dance smaller? That's the problem. I think we play small by default. And whenever you can catch it, then you have to go off and do that thing. I think you need to learn to inoculate yourself against judgment. Whenever you are worried about doing something, you're worried about how somebody will think about you, then I think you should go off and do that thing. 
I mean, we're, we're doing a Skype call here. You're not at home for the next three months. You're, you're in some closet or whatever you are. Like, I think you should use this video and post it up, right? Like, I think what you look like or what you're doing, then you have to go off and do that thing just to train that muscle in yourself to do it. Because there's no way you're going to go off and do some big thing. If you want to be an entrepreneur and go off and change the world and have some big goal for yourself, there's no way you're going to do it. Because as soon as you get any kind of negative feedback, you're going to stop because you haven't conditioned yourself. So I think it's instead of just going after the big things, it's in the micro, it's in all the little daily activities. You, I probably played small 10 times already today and didn't even notice it. It's when you can, when you catch it, then you have to go off and do that thing. You start building your muscle to inoculate yourself against judgment. Got it, got it. And I, I want everybody to focus on the fact that Evan, you know, uh, you're definitely, you know, living, uh, you know, you, you, you practice what you preach, you know, you just showed us like, you know, you told the story how you dance even harder. Uh, but even for you who are, you know, practicing self awareness, you've, you've, you've known a lot about it, you know, you are, you are living, you're living it. Uh, even for you, you, you catch yourself doing it, right? So, uh, and for you it was like a step from you know, dancing a little bit, uh, catching yourself and then going all in, you know, for a lot of people, even dancing in public, you know, even the little dance is already a, uh, a you know, a big step to do. So, uh, so definitely, I think a great example of, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you caught me right here as well. You definitely, you know, I'm, I'm probably thinking too much what people will think of this uh, <laughs> soundproof closet I'm, I'm in uh, right now. I should, I should think less. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for a little reminder. Um, awesome. So, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've read your brief to the people, you know, at 19, uh, you built and then sold your biotech software company at 22, uh, you know, you were a venture capitalist, two world records and so on and so on. So, um, in, in a nutshell, you know, you, you told your story, I guess, uh, uh, a lot of times, what is the achievement in the last you know in your basically life uh, that you are the most proud of out of all the great things you've done done so far i have a tough time with these questions because i don't really look back um you know i think i think my son being born is probably the greatest from a business perspective i don't know man i spend very little time in the past i mean i i have a hard time even celebrating when I hit milestones now, when, when, when I crossed a million subscribers last year um, on my YouTube channel, everybody's like, are you going to have a celebration? What's the party going to be? It's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to. The, the celebration is the daily. You know, like the work that I did, like this, talking to you right now, I'm enjoying this. Regardless of how many people end up, what, maybe you have five people who are listening to this or five million people. It doesn't matter to me. Like I enjoy the process. And I think of, um, I'm reading the book of Martin Luther King right now. And he had just won the Nobel Peace Prize. And so he's, he's flown over to Europe and he's around kings and queens. And he's saying, this is a marvelous mountaintop that I'm on top of right now. This is a great place to be. But the valley calls to me. Like he wants to get back on the streets and get spat on in the face and get criticized and do his marches because he loves the work of the doing more than whatever accomplishments that he's gotten. And so... You know, I've got I've got my YouTube play button behind me and a couple things. I got my books out that I never thought I'd be a writer, all that kind of stuff. But it really, I, I spend very little time thinking about what I have done and much more about what am I doing right now. Got it. So, uh, so yeah. So you don't focus so much on the past, and are you? It's just like you said, like it's mostly because you're focused so much on the present moment and just trying to appreciate the present moment and enjoy the process. Or, or, or you're also driven a lot by your future goals and ambitions, or you're not even thinking about that at all. I'm driven by fear of regret. Like, I don't want to regret my life. I don't want to be at the end of my life looking back and saying, like, I could have done more. I could have been stronger. I could have had more courage. I could have taken more, more chances. The thing that, that I'm terrified of is, uh, and back to your first question, I look at, I look at, um, uh, who's an example like ACDC or like these rock bands where the singers are in their 60s or 70s or and it's great that they keep going. I love that that they keep going. They don't hang it up. But what are they doing? They're singing songs from 30, 40 years ago. Like that would drive me nuts. I, I don't care about my back catalog. I always think my best video is yet to come. My best interview is yet to come. I want to be creating new constantly. And so I massively kind of disrespect everything that I've already done. And uh, I, I'm terrified of being the aging rock star equivalent 
living off of my past accomplishments as opposed to like constantly making amazing new things every day. Got it. And was it the drive, uh, you know, you always had, you know, that's that's what was drive as soon, as soon as you became an adult. That was the main driving force or or maybe some event that's kind of changed that thinking. So I think some of that was instilled into my into myself by my parents. Um, I've got a picture of my parents on my wall behind me when I'm about eight or nine years old. And I walk in and see that every day. And, and my mom instilled in me the sense of responsibility that if you have the ability to help, then you have the responsibility to help that if you can, then you must. Um, she, she wanted to be a lawyer and I asked her, why do you want to be, or why are you a lawyer, mom? I'm, I'm eight or nine years old. And she corrected me. She's like, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a constitutional lawyer. It's like, I don't know what the, what's the difference when I'm eight years old. She's like the difference is lawyers just follow the law where constitutional lawyers help create new laws. And so always that sense of like, giving back and being part of the community and, and giving what you can. But I think it's gotten, it's gotten a lot stronger due to the habits and routines and rituals. And I know kind of your show is all about, and you want to get into, uh, as I surround myself with people who are playing a bigger game, it helps me realize that I need to step up. I need to have a bigger impact. And so I think my parents planted the seed and then everything that I've done, uh, since has just made that, you know, this made the made the seed grow stronger and stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. And I, I, we were talking about the you know planting the seed as early as possible uh, in my in my previous podcast and uh, podcast episode. And uh, you might you're probably gonna hate this question, but uh, <laughs> um, you know, so you you've been blessed. You know, you had you had great parents. Somehow that seed was the right feed. It resonated with you. You know, it grown into this beautiful tree. You know, and you are driven by it, and you and you live uh, by it every day. Um, uh, for the people who are not, you know, but they want to be, you know, they check your videos. You know, they they get inspired. They get motivated by the all these amazing people. Uh, what is the single uh, uh, most effective, um, you know, habit you think? You know, this this keystone habit for anybody to want to, uh, yeah, just be successful entrepreneur. Is it? Yeah, and uh, I, I mm -hmm. would start with. Uh, first off, I don't hate that question. I think it's good. Um, <laughs> I would start with a mindset shift that everything is possible for you. That whether you had the greatest parents of all time or the worst parents of all time, it's awesome. When we start to compare ourselves to others and say, well, Evan is successful because he had great parents or this person is successful because they went to a great school or whatever the thing is, when you start comparing yourself and you realize what you don't have, that's when you start losing. Um, I wrote a book, Your One Word, and I profiled two different NBA all-stars. So they're, they're all-star basketball players they're at the top of the top. And they were asked, well, how did you get here? And one person said, I'm here because of my parents, because I had the greatest parents, because they showed me how to be a human being, because they taught me how to work hard, and that's why I'm here. And then the other guy, also NBA All-Stars, said, why are you here? He said, I'm here because of my parents, because my parents sucked, and because I never want to be like my parents ever. They were the like, worst human beings alive, and I'm never going to be like them. Right? It's like, and they both, they both achieved success. So like, the, the path is available for everybody as long as you believe first that the path is available. So it's the mindset shift that everything is possible for you, that you have Michael Jordan level talent at something. Um, the habit that I would say is the most important, whether you wanna be an entrepreneur or anything else, you wanna have success, is we have all felt at moments in our life bold, unstoppable, courageous. You've had that feeling. We've all had that feeling. It's just not consistent. You're not consistently feeling bold and unstoppable. You know, for somebody who wants to take one of your 21 day challenges, uh, that might be really scary for somebody, you know, for them to take on that new challenge and, and commit publicly to do it. Um, you know, maybe doing a keto challenge or, a, or a, no, what's, what is it? It's not keto. You have uh, intermittent fasting, fasting. intermittent fasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like maybe, maybe that's going to mean that their parents will massively judge them because like breakfast is, you know, the meal of the day that everybody hangs out with. Like, who knows? Taking on any of these 21 day challenges might be really uh, super scary for people. And it's going to be hard for them to do it if they don't start their day feeling bold and unstoppable. So I think by default, we play small, but we have all felt moments of boldness and courageousness. The trick is understanding what is the thing that makes you 
feel bold, courageous, unstoppable. When you have felt that in the past, what led to it? Like, break it down. Was it listening to a podcast like this? Was it watching a video? Was it reading a book? Was it having a conversation? Like, what is the thing that gets you feeling fired up? And then put that into your morning routine. I think most people wake up like an accident. Uh, I think most people do even worse. They hit the snooze button and we could talk about what that means. Uh, but if you started your day with the thing that made you feel bold and unstoppable, and no judgment. Maybe maybe you need to wake up and go to the balcony and meditate naked in the sun with your cat. Like, awesome. If that's the thing that gets you feeling bold and unstoppable, then like every morning, that's what you wake up and you go and do. If you did that, if you did the thing that made you feel bold and unstoppable every day for the next year, your life would be unrecognizable one year from today compared to where you are right now. Got it. And how, what would you say, like, you know, the, the way, you know, the habit science works and everything like that, um, like to get to that point already by thinking about it, like it seems like super, super hard, you know, um, what are some, you know, intermediate steps like right so where would you uh i mean let's, let's just simply talk about morning routine i think i think you have a lot to say about it a lot to think about it so okay let's start from the snooze button you already you already planted me that seed a little bit okay so i'm just gonna uh, i'm just gonna eat eat that nice delicious apple what what what, <laughs> what, 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 what is your take on that snooze button <laughs> so most people wake up and they hit a snooze button right yeah. right and that what does that tell you? What are you doing when you hit the snooze button? What you're doing is the night before you set a goal for yourself. My goal is I'm going to wake up at seven o'clock the next morning or whatever time you set for yourself. And the very first thing that you do every day is say, no, I'm not going to hit my goal. <laughs> That's what you did, right? My goal is to wake up at seven and then you say, no, I'm not going to hit my goal. And so I think you have to be very careful about the goals that you set for yourself. And when you set one, then you have to do it. You have to do the goals that you set for yourself. Every time you hit the snooze button and you say, I'm not going to hit my goal, you are losing respect and credibility for yourself. Mm -hmm. You but are why, losing why, self-respect. So, so what, what do you think is a bigger reason why people do that? Is it because they set too big of the goals, you know, uh, like they kind of overestimated the amount of uh, motivation or is it is it something else? Like what was the lack of willpower? What is it? Uh, they don't respect themselves. Mm -hmm. Most people have... Most people have very low self-respect. So they set a goal in a moment of courageousness or boldness or they, or they watch uh, you know, a video and they get inspired and they set a goal. It's like, yeah. And then almost immediately it's like, oh, you can't do that. You're not going to do that. And especially when it's the next day. And that's what you're telling yourself. You hit the snooze button and say, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, that goal I set yesterday was crazy. You don't have respect for yourself. And that's, that's the problem for most people. Most people don't actually believe that they have Michael Jordan level talent at something. Michael Jordan is amazing, but he's not that special. Like everybody has that in them to do something on that level. But most people, they don't believe it. And so they let themselves down constantly. But do you believe everybody? Uh, and I think, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, what I did the research about, you, you know, you're helping people to achieve uh, their untapped potential. So do you believe that uh, we should, like our ultimate goal is to become a Michael Jordan in something, whatever it is? Yeah. As a, as a, as a, as a person, as a human being, that's, uh, that's the best goal we could kind of focus on. What, whatever that looks like to you, right? Like maybe, maybe your goal is to be the best dad of all time. Great. Then go off and be the best dad of all time. Like most people have really low ambitions. Most people talk a big game about what they want to do, but then they can't. They don't believe that they can actually go off and do that. And I'm I'm trying to help people realize this is possible. Like whoever your hero is, it's entirely possible for you to do that. The person that you look up to, whoever your hero is, chances are they started off with less than what you already have right now. They came from a worse upbringing and have less resources than what you already have right now. There's no reason why you can't go off and accomplish the same thing. The difference is the mindset and belief system. Got it. Uh, you know, mindset is huge. It's, it's, it's definitely huge. Um, I, I want to, you know, just add a little bit and to see what, what you're thinking of it. Like, you know, in habit building theory, like the way, uh, you know, the behavioral scientists would approach this snoozing problem uh, is they would say, um, uh, why why did you hit the snooze button is 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 because you set too big of a goal think of the goal 
uh, that is achievable, like 100%. It looks so achievable that you're gonna win it, you know. So you start with the victory, right? So you start with the, uh, you know, you know, you know, you're gonna set yourself for eight hours, you know. Then uh, the next day, you know, maybe you do it one week in a row, eight hours. If your goal is to get to the seven hours or something like that, or you know, or maybe okay, not not by the not not by duration, by uh, by waking up time, you know. The point is that uh, for a lot of people, it's very hard, you know, even if they're motivated at the evening, you know, if they get um, get pumped after our podcast, it's a lot of uh, effort. And that's where a lot of people fail by getting pumped. And then, you know, that pump somehow disappears. Right. So uh, the behavioral scientists argue that you should just simply gradually go to your goals and go step by step and stuff like that. So what, what is your take on that? So I think you should do the thing that gets you feeling pumped every morning, not having to, you know, I think for most people, uh, it happens randomly. Like your episode comes out, it's like, okay, I'll listen to it today. And like, boom, wow, surprise guest. And it's awesome. And they're on, on fire for most people. It's random instead of actually purposeful and intention intentional. So have a morning routine that sets you up for success every day so that you are feeling pumped and unstoppable. Uh, I think for goals, you want to have it something that is achievable, but is at, but it's at the edge of your achievableness. I think that's how you build self-confidence. And that gives you the confidence to go and set another. I think if you were to run a race against three-year-olds, you would win. But it's not going to make you feel good. Like it's an easy, it's an easy goal. It's so like if you start too low, it's okay. Okay, maybe okay, my my goal is to run awesome. I'm building a little bit of momentum. But you you build the self-confidence within yourself when you do the goal that is hard. And so, sure, if you if you need eight hours sleep and you get up uh, after eight hours, awesome, you're up. You're not gonna feel that great about it when it was easy. It's when it's difficult. This is the time. When it's difficult, what do you do? But what happens? When you, yeah. Sorry, but what happens to your mindset when you continuously fail uh, on achieving, you know, you know, because it's so hard to, uh, you know, really to, f to figure out what is that limit that I could still achieve it, but, uh, uh, but, it, you know, but, uh, but it's hard enough, right? So, and a lot of people probably fail at that step. That's why, that's why they, they fail to achieve. But what happens to the mindset when you continuously fail, you know, like, uh, like in comparison to continuously achieving something that is really small, maybe it's ridiculously small, maybe it's like boring and you know not re as rewarding for your self confident. Doesn't really build. Yeah, beating the <laughs> the five year old kid, you know, doesn't make me really feel uh, super confident. But uh, I have that feeling of accomplishment versus of uh, you know competing with uh, my level of of person that I keep uh, you know losing. I keep taking the second place for like two weeks, and I'm like ah. Frick it, you know, I'm I'm done. You know? So what what is your take on that? Like when you continuously lose. Yeah, what I want people to do is tie their self respect to the to the effort level that they're putting in. Do you respect the effort level that you're putting in? Like if you're running against Usain Bolt every day, you're gonna lose. If you're gonna lose every day, like for the rest of your life, you're gonna lose. But do you respect the effort? Do you respect the effort? And that's why, like when it's difficult and you get up and you do the thing, that's why it becomes super important because the challenge is you're not respecting your effort level. I don't care about the results. I care about my effort level going in like this interview that we're doing now. I want it to be fire. Like I go in every day to what I'm doing, thinking I want to create something that my grandkids are going to be proud of. Like I want to show my grandkids this interview. I want to say, Hey, look, look at what grandpa Evan did. Right. That's my intent always going in. Do I do I get that result? Maybe, maybe not. Like maybe I suck today. Maybe, maybe just this is brutal. Maybe I suck today. <laughs> sure, but like yeah. regard but but I'm never I'm never blaming anybody else. Of like, course, yeah. If a if a mouse was interviewing me, I should still bring fire, right? Yeah, got it, got it, got it. It's, <laughs> it's like funny. it's like uh, it's like uh, Kev, Kevin Kevin O'Leary said, like I was I was listening to this uh interview with him where he was comparing you know the companies uh, that are more successful and uh, he came up to the fact that uh, 100 percent of the companies that return the most uh, you know to him uh, on capital are actually run or co-founded by women and then he yeah. said and then he immediately added a comment where he's like i don't want to spark the whole debate on you know on a gender and stuff like that i would invest in a turtle if he would make me money so uh, <laughs> so that was an interesting comparison but but i get what you're saying basically uh 
always ask yourself, did I do the best that I could? And if the answer is yes, that's all that matters. Is that is that right? Yeah, and for most people, the answer is never yes. It's never yes. I get it. When you are when your when your alarm goes off at seven in the morning, and listen, it goes off for me, and I'm tired, and I got lines on my face from the sheets, and you know all that stuff. Do you respect your effort to try and do that thing? Because listen, for some people, just moving their arm is is actually you know, for somebody in the hospital, I got a, a friend's father in the hospital and he's celebrating that he was able to cross his legs today. Like that's a massive victory for me. Crossing my legs now is super easy. So it's not something to celebrate. Do you respect the effort that you put in on chasing your goal? And for most people, it's no. And so regardless of what the outcome is, do you get the result or not? Do you respect your effort? And if you do that, that's how you build credibility and respect for yourself. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, you know, I, I, I still can't help like, you know, because I, I'm, uh, let's say you, you, you represent a um, certain group of people who are, uh, in, let's see, in my eyes, you know, super disciplined, they're very self aware, uh, you know, you're driven by big goals, you know, and, and, and you're in it 100% at all times. And that's sort of, uh, you know, a lot of people would love to, uh, to be in your position. Uh, but I, you know, it, in in our habit building space, we all always deal with a lot of, you know, a lot of excuses and stuff like that, and and that's that's normal. Uh, but uh, but I don't, you know, I don't want to focus about, you know, the excuse part. I want to focus on uh, skill. Like I, I want to look at what you're saying as a skill, right? So, for example, you uh, discipline. I think is just a very huge skill that you have uh, mastered. You know, that's why. Uh, you have discipline on, you know, not hitting the snooze button on making the best of, of your day. Uh, so I want to and I know that you don't get to the discipline, uh, the level of discipline that you have in one day or in one week, you know. Uh, what are some other practical tips <laughs> that you recommend for people? You know, what are the thoughts? Maybe it's all about the thoughts, you know, what are the, what are some of the thoughts and what are some of the action that would help people to uh, to get to that level of discipline and, and self-respect. I think it still starts with the mindset before okay. anything else. And for any goal that you have for yourself, like if you want to have the greatest podcast in the world, you want to be the best interviewer of all time. You want to be better than Larry King or like whoever you look up to. Uh, there's a million reasons why it won't work. Like there's a million reasons why it's not going to happen for you. And there's eight why it will. I focus on the eight instead of the million, the million is real. And listen, I can, I can talk to you and give you a million more and you can talk to your friends mm -hmm. and they can give you a million more. And now you yeah. got 10 million reasons why it's not going to work could, out. We could compile a book, three million reasons why you're not, why you're going to fail. <laughs> right. And then there's still eight of why you will win. And that's all I focus on. I only spend time focused on the eight reasons why I will win. And, and it's just that mindset shift. It's not that those reasons don't exist. I just don't respect them because what's the alternative? It's either be in that life and be complaining and be around negativity and, and be unhappy and never go for my dream. Or I'm going to find the one path or eight paths that have some potential. I'm going to try those things out. Even, like doing this interview here, right? Like you're, you're away from home for the next three months. You're in, locked up in some closet doing this interview. You could have easily said, Oh, I don't have my studio. I don't have my setup. You know, the video is not going to be good. People will judge me. I'm going to put everything on hold for the next three months, you know, and then, and then in three months, it's going to be something else. you know, like, Oh, you know, I, I got a pimple on my nose or, uh, you know, I'm not feeling so, like there's always a reason where it's like, respect your effort, respect the effort like you're away from home for three months because of whatever reason awesome i'm gonna i'm gonna do this interview in the closet because this interview is going up and then and then the next time you get a challenge like you you're this is the step you've built your muscle a little bit stronger right so every time you get faced with a challenge do you respect the effort that you put in like maybe maybe the video still doesn't work like maybe the r maybe my internet dies and this whole thing fails and you have to close the show yourself and you can't post it. it. It's not the result of getting the final interview. It's like you showed up. You can respect the effort that you put in to make this thing happen. And if you did that consistently, it starts with the mindset of I'm going to focus on the eight reasons why I can't win instead of the million reasons why I can't. And then 
respecting your effort on a daily basis to say, I made this happen. The way, the way through it to keep the motivation is still one, starting with the thing that makes you feel bold and confident. Two, I would say designing your environment really makes a difference. So I don't know if you're using the video or not, but like I've got five posters on my wall hanging behind me of people that make me feel belief and confidence. They likely mean nothing to people who are watching, but to me, I walk into the environment and it means something to me. And that's a, that's a, that's a great hack that you can do because it only requires setting up once and then it hits you every day. So example, um, intermittent fasting, you know, some people might get started like, yeah, I'm at, I've got to do intermittent fasting to listen to your podcast and they get an idea. Like I'm going to, I'm going to sign up for that challenge. Great. If you then created like what makes you want to stay intermittent fasting like maybe you are going on a trip to cuba and you have to look good in that bathing suit or maybe you are afraid of getting alzheimer's and and like you want to stay healthy like whatever the triggers or reminders are for you like put that up in your house put that up put put that on your fridge so that when you're gonna go grab that you know chocolate bar or or bag of chips or whatever you see that and it's, it's a trigger. You set it up once, but it's a constant trigger in the positive. And so I love, I love setting up my physical environment um, and then having a strict habit in the morning. Like, what do you do when you wake up? What's the thing that makes you feel bold, confident, excited that becomes as automatic as making your bed or brushing your teeth? Got it. Got it. So uh, I, I've, I've got two questions, but okay, let's start with the, uh, with the first one. Uh, Okay, so let's let's leave the snooze part uh, apart. You've mastered it, you know. Um, I've, you know, uh, I'm I'm speaking as a as a third person, you know. Let's say I, I've mastered uh, the waking up part, you know. I feel freaking powerful. Uh, what is, um, yeah, the next action? What what is that perfect routine you think uh, is is really the most beneficial? You know, I know it's individual and stuff like that, but what uh, what what is your perfect morning routine? So I have a short version and a long version. The short version that's that's the must is I need to get some kind of inspiration and I need to share it. So usually I'll go to Instagram every morning and make a, a quick video and I'm either channeling a message from a successful entrepreneur that got inspired by or an entrepreneur that I'm thinking about from the day before that I know needs to grow that I like I, tomorrow morning I might be channeling our conversation. Or with that idea of you have to, you have to, you have to love the process and you have to respect your effort. Like I might go on a rant tomorrow morning about respecting the effort. So I'll do a recall to something that's happened, and I need to share it. So that that process can take me a couple minutes. I just need to wake up, either look at something and be inspired, or recall my day before, and then. But the sharing is important for me. If I'm not sharing it publicly, it, I don't get as much of the, the the boldness. And that's that's bare minimum. That I'll do pretty much every day. Uh, if I, if I'm traveling and I've got meetings and it's crazy, that's, that'll be like the short five minute version. If I'm home, I'm in the city and I have more time. My usual routine would then be, okay, start with that. Um, I'll go get coffee in the morning with my wife. We have some time together before both of our crazy days. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll then walk back from the coffee shop and do Instagram DMS uh, to people, video DMs. So if somebody asks me a question and I'm I'm trying to help them out, because the giving, the giving and the helping makes me feel good. The contribution makes me feel good. Uh, I'll come back and usually do some kind of physical activity. So right now I'm uh, running through my condo and watching the highlights from the League of Legends World Championships happening right now. Um, then I'll do some stretching for 15 minutes. I'm not, I'm not very flexible and I have a goal to touch my toes. So I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, and then some breathing, uh, through the Wim Hof method that I tried, I guess a couple years ago, haven't been sick and I've, I used to get sick all the time. So I'll, uh, I'll do some breathing and then, and then I'll get started on my day. Uh, that, that, that will go from, I don't know, I'll leave with my wife at seven 30 and I'll usually be starting kind of at my desk at 10. So that's that's an extended morning routine. Um, but I can get it down to two minutes if I need to. Just get my phone, share something, and boom, I'm off working. That's odd. All right. And what are some of your working habits? So what are, you know, what, what did you learn over the years? You know, the way you work, what makes you most productive, what really gets you in a deep work phase? 
and how do you structure your work? You know, do you have these little bursts of like, you know, half an hour there and there, and then you, you do something less strenuous? Like, how do you work? Yeah. So some hacks for me, um, I love standing up. I'm mm -hmm. on a stand up desk right now. I'm actually, I'm on, I'm on a mini trampoline. Yeah. So I, I can bounce, I'm bounce all day long. I try <laughs> to hold it steady when I'm doing interviews because it looks like I'm crazy. Um, uh, you your physical think, environment, you like, what's that? <laughs> You see, you shouldn't you shouldn't think that yeah, you're crazy. Like whatever, let people think that you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. See, yeah, I'm yeah. playing small all the time too, right? Like yeah, you, need, yeah. you need to you need to catch those. That's it. All day long, I'm gonna be bouncing yeah, on my that's interviews. That's it. Bounce even more. Different everybody yeah. like Blair Witch Project, uh, <laughs> yeah. nausea. Watch me go up and down. Um, uh, you know, I I I need I love natural light. I I work well in natural light. So like I took out all of the fluorescence. I'm in front of a huge window. Uh, I like being able to see outside when I'm working. It gives me more energy. Um, I've always got a bottle of water close by for me. Um, what else can I share? I think in terms of in terms of what I do on different days, I have a really hard time with switching tasks. Uh, some pe I, th I think humans in general have a hard time switching tasks. But me, I'm I'm especially slow. So to go from interviewing with you to then writing my book and then going back to the interview would be massively unproductive. Like I, I, it would be such a huge block for me. It'd be so slow. Um, I'm naturally introverted. That probably doesn't feel like I am, but normally that's what I am. And so like we're doing this interview on a Thursday, Thursday is my public facing day. I'm, I'm all day interviews. Like I, I'm going from you to somebody else to somebody else. And it's just all day interviews. And I love, I love blocking similar tasks together. So on Thursdays, I put my extroverted Evan hat on and I'm, I'm ready to go and spit fire. Uh, and then, you know, on Friday, I'm going to do something else. I like it one because it's, it's way more productive. So I think what I used to do before an interview was, Oh, I got to research the person and they're what they're up to. And then, and then I'm nervous. Like the first 20 minutes, sorry, the 20 minutes before you do a phone call or an interview is, is massively unproductive time. So I wanted to destroy that and just go boom, back to back to back to back to back. And then also I miss it. Like I, I like missing my work. So I'm not going to do another interview until Thursday and, and come tonight and tomorrow I'm going to be, I'm going to be interviewed out. It's going to be like, I'm done. I got nothing else to give. I'm totally spent. But then come like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like, yeah, I, like I haven't talked to anybody in a while. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pumped to kind of, right. And so I think, um, I don't want to burn out from my work. And, and I think if we're doing the same thing every day, it's easy to feel like things get boring. And so I like having one thing per day, one general activity one that keeps me massively focused and productive, but also I, it makes me miss it so that I, I'm pumped to come back to it next week. Got it. So batching, batching really works for you. Exactly. I think that's the, one of the yeah best little uh, sort of a work hacks people could do if they could afford it, if their you know uh, work lifestyle allows them to uh, to batch things. You know, if they if they have that freedom, that control over their task, I think that's that's awesome. Uh, and the missing the missing I never thought of it that way but that's actually makes sense a lot of uh, you know because yeah you got you got to miss it uh, you, you know I think one of the key in making the relationship strong like I, I'm talking about the you know human relationship is actually having that missing element you know because the if you hang out with the same person you know day and night if you work you know that's why I think where the danger is working with your spouse is is you don't have a chance to miss each other right and that's yeah. that 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 point where you know that's why I say, you know, whenever people have crisis, like, yeah, just, just, you know, spend more time apart and yeah, just get, get, get a chance to miss each other. And I would, I would watch mm -hmm. the hedge too, right? Like it's not only if you have the freedom to do it, you need to make the freedom to do it, whether that's all day long or whether that's just protecting half an hour every day, because everybody will have an agenda for your time. Everybody wants something from you and will have an opinion on what you should do with your life. And until you start building some some gates and so you start pushing those gates out and say, like, this block of time is for me that I'm going to do what I want to do, then you can start expanding it from half an hour to an hour to two hours to four hours. And maybe you quit your job and it becomes eight hours. But it's not just only for people who are lucky and have freedom. Like, you need to make that happen for yourself because people will always have something for you to do with, with your for time. For sure. For sure, no. That's uh, I'm I'm so glad you said you said it because yeah, I already had some voices, you know, and I, I was hedging maybe a little bit too strong, but yeah, even if you are, you know, uh, you know, working, I don't know, in in uh, in, uh, in McDonald's or stuff like that, you still have a lot of of your free time that you are still, you know, 100% in control, and uh, yeah, you can you can make, yeah, you can you can just control. 
a lot of more of your life than you think. Um, uh, one, I think, you know, we, we just have a couple of more minutes, but I just wanted to really touch this topic of uh, visualization and uh, just because when you were saying that, you know, set your environment right, set those triggers that triggers the, the right emotions, the right, you know, sort of, uh, you know, puts you in the right mood and the right mindset. Uh, what is your take on visualization? Do you practice it? Uh, yeah. What, what do you think about uh, manifestation and visualization? Um, I think having a having an understanding of the world you want to build is super helpful um, in terms of, of an environment whatever is appeasing appealing to you like I've got these giant posters or canvases that are black and white like maybe you hate black and white maybe black and white makes you want to kill yourself okay great like don't do black and white it's it's fine it's not it's what makes me feel excited right um, I think I think though uh, like people ask me what what's your 10 year goal for yourself I think if you know what you're going to be in 10 years, you're thinking small. I have no 10 year goal. I have no five year plan. Um, I think much more important than, than visualizing like the Ferrari that you're going to have is doing work that is exciting for you and, the, and enjoying the process. So all I have is a lifetime. I want to, I want to solve the world's biggest problem, untapped human potential. Like it's never going to happen. It will never happen. So I'm, I'm trying to empty the ocean with, with a spoon. And every day I take a little bit more water out of the ocean, but like I, I will never drain the ocean. And so that's the lifetime mission that's inspiring. And then what am I doing right now? Like in the next couple months, what am I working on? And not being tied down or locked into where I have to be in five or 10 years. Got it. All right. That's, uh, you know, that makes sense. I, I, lo I love that your answers, you know, are uh, a little bit different, you know, like uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're a little bit different from uh, what you hear normally so uh thank you for you know just trying and actually being unique uh all right evan so we got a couple of minutes left and uh as this is all about habits i want to ask you two questions uh first one is what's the personal habits uh that you are most proud of and what is the habit you want to develop next that's uh, question number two I've got nothing on both. Um, All right, so let's, <laughs> let's, 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 let's end it here. <laughs> here's a, here's a, here's the thing, right? Like, I'm not, I not. There's nothing that I'm like. I don't. I think the proud of. I think is still like past looking, and I don't spend any time there. Like, I'm not proud of. I don't know. I wake up and I, I do my routine, but it's not something that I, I ever look back on and say, wow, that's awesome that I did that one thing. Um, and then if I ever want to do something, then I just start doing it. Like if there's a habit that I want to build, then, then, then I would start now. There's, I have nothing that I want to, it's like the five year plan. There's nothing that I, that I hope to do one day. Like I want to work on my flexibility. So I'm stretching every morning. I'm just doing it. There's nothing that I want to work on because as soon as I get there, I figure out, okay, if I'm going to do it, I have to start right now. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. All right. That makes sense. That's once again, thank you for your, uh, you know, unique angle of, uh, on, on these uh questions and uh once again everybody uh we had a nice conversation super nice conversation with evan carmichael you can find him on instagram and of course on youtube where he has over 1 million subscribers he doesn't care how many subscribers he has but uh, a lot of people do so i want to stress you know this metric uh because that's that just shows you know for outside world that uh, whatever you do uh, it resonates with people, and I think that's uh, that's important. You know, sort of a little victory uh, you could at least think of at the moment. <laughs> uh, all right, Evan. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that, and I wish you a wonderful day. I, I wish you to, uh, you know, get closer to solving the world's biggest problem, helping people. L let me throw one more thing. Do I have time for one more analogy? Of course, let's do it. Okay, I know, I know, I'm I'm the one who has to go, but 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 let me let me. I want to throw one more in because we were talking about seeds and and plants, and you said tree. I have an analogy called you need to be the tree. And what does a tree do? Think about what a tree does. A tree breathes in carbon dioxide, poison. Breathe in poison for us, right? Breathes in poison carbon dioxide, eats it, grows from it, and then spits out oxygen positivity. That's what a tree does. And that's that's what I see entrepreneurs and leaders and, and you doing. Like why I would post this video of you being in the closet is because it gives permission to everybody else who is afraid to launch their podcast or afraid to go off and do their thing unless it's perfect. 
and it's great to see me and I got my microphone and my camera and it's all looking fancy and, and it sounds perfect and high street internet and everything. That's awesome. Unless you don't want to do ghetto just for the sake of being ghetto. But when, when something happens that's negative, I always try to make it as that's the best. Like it's the best. This is the, it's the best that you're in your closet right now. And I think that if you can learn, not you, like you, yes, but everybody else listening too, if you can learn to be the tree, that if you could take somebody's criticism and judgment and then eat it and grow from it, then it allows you to spit out positivity to help other people who are going through that same thing. And so sharing the vulnerabilities, if you're taking one of these 21 day challenges and you're afraid of what your parents are going to think about you and then you go through it and you do it and you eat their judgment, you can then help other people who want to do it and are afraid of their parents' judgment as well. I can't do that. My parents love me through everything that I've ever done. I've never faced their judgment. So as much as I can share, you know, I think it's important to ignore what your parents say. Awesome. Like it doesn't have any teeth to me because I didn't go through that. But you guys can. And so be the tree. Your job is tree. to take in, be the tree, take in the poison, eat it, grow from it, and then spit out positivity for others. Spit, spit out, you know, I imagine these sort of a rainbow colored candies that everybody loves. You know, t taking the there poison and make, and make it ran rainbow candies, people. Be the tree. All right, Evan, thank you so much for, uh, once again, for giving us your time, giving us your energy, giving us, us your thoughts and your everything that you did. Thank you from uh, the bottom of my heart, and I wish you a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for the love, man. It's been fun.